Hello everyone, it's Shazer, welcome back to the Railway and today we're going to be um, fitting my Hush Hush with the DCC decoder. I uh, hope you enjoy the video and let's get the video started then. So yeah, obviously as I was saying on the other day, um, I have got the DCC decoder here and obviously I'm going to say this now, it is very important to film stuff like this just in case it goes wrong. Or anything like that, and I thought to myself, get it filmed so I can show it on video and whatnot. Obviously, I have kind of started to disassemble the hush hush already. Um, another thing I've got to apologize for um, is that I didn't post anything on Sunday, I do apologize for that. Um, but I was so excited to get this in my hush hush and see if it works and everything like that. So, obviously, the hush hush is in the locomotive cradle at the minute. If I can somehow show you. So it's ready to get this fitted in. So what we're going to do now then guys. Is I'm going to take it over the, onto the detail table. And that's when I'm going to actually be doing it. Uh, actually fitting the decoder in. So what I'm going to do now then guys. I'm going to stop the video here. And then I'm going to go up onto the detail table. Where we would usually fill locomotives. But I'm going to be fitting this into my hush hush and if you want to fit yours if you want to get one of these for your hush hush i will include the link down below so yeah so enough of me rambling on like i normally do and let's just get up onto the table and get this fit with dcc then and right, talk to you a bit then guys right then guys so obviously as you can see everything is set up here in some sort of way, some sort of way Obviously the first thing you need to do with this hush hush before you actually do fit it with the decoder is I'm going to show you guys the instructions so you know where the decoder goes basically. And I think I did show the instructions in my review but I just thought I'd just point it out again. So, yeah by, by the looks of it guys if you look it looks like it's in the tender. Which I think it actually is because I have actually watched a couple of videos on other people on how to do it. So, what we're going to do then is, I think it's a star screwdriver, whatever you call them. One of these. Um, but I'm going to go for the biggest one, what I've got in this screwdriver pack. So, so obviously now what we need to do is get the hush hush close to us if we can. And I do apologise that. You know, my hand does get in the way. And I have actually got screw as well, so. Yeah, got the screw. Right, so what I'm gonna do now, guys, is I'm gonna somehow carefully flip it over so the screw actually falls out like so. That actually works out a lot better than what I thought it would. Now as you can see, guys, here's the screw. What keeps the tender body on place so i'm going to just bob that next to the coupled hook so i know where it is and then all if all being well that should now just come out like so which is obvious and then now with a bit of luck i should just be able to pop the body off like that look so obviously this is so that's where the burning smell is coming from it's bloody tender Awesome, I'll figure out how to change all that. So, what we're going to do now then, guys, is we're going to take out the blanking plate, which I, I don't know if I'll be able to do it with my fingers, but I'm going to give it a shot. Oh, it's coming. Yep. Got it done with my fingers, guys, just like that. And by the way, guys, I'm going to be putting this in the detail box, so it's not going to waste, if you know what I'm saying. But obviously now I have actually started DCC, so that's the reason why, um, you know, I'm doing it like this. But one thing I've noticed in someone else's video, I can't remember who it was, um, he actually pointed out, if you look at the bottom of the tender very, very carefully, it's got like a speaker thing at the bottom, like the, the shape for the speaker. So I had the plan on um, fitting this with it. It's Deco a sound decoder one day. I mean, it'll be interesting to see that actually, to be honest with you, but who knows? So, here's the bit what's actually going to be interesting now, then, guys, is fitting this into this. And obviously, before I do, to put the tender back on and whatnot, 
I will be testing it on the track and I will be filming it to see if it works out as well. So, why does it always happen to me with packaging? Does anybody else have that look or is it just me? Screwdriver in. Right. We're in, guys. So, obviously, as you can see, I think this is the instructions again. Some more instruction paperwork, or whatever you want to call it, I know, but. If you look, it just sort of tells you about how to possibly fit your decoder into your um, engine and it's telling you how many volts it can take as well. Um, which, obviously, I haven't really glanced through this just yet because, obviously, I was going to just save it. But by the looks of it, it's not showing you any pictures or anything like that. So, we're, we're just going to put that to one side. And then we're going to get this uh, little bag out, which I think has got the dec decoder in it, if I'm correct. Yes. So, I don't know if I've got any scissors in but if I have them... Oh, yeah, I have. Right. Um, let me see how tiny it is, look, guys. 20 quid for this thing. And <laughs> it's just so small. Right, one minute, guys. I just need to get some scissors. This is just so... It, I can get into the bag and possibly if I need to reuse the bag then I can do so I'm just making sure that there's no um, wires in the way because if there is then I won't be happy all right so all, all of them guys is just a small slit, slit into the bag slip or whatever you want to call it right and as you can see guys is the decoder. Um, I'm just going to move my scissors away from my private area near enough. <laughs> um, here's the decoder. So if I'm get yeah, I thought so. So if I'm correct, it should go in like that. If I'm correct, I think that's how I've seen other people do it. But there's only one way to find out. I mean, that's went in. Right, I'm hoping that purple wire doesn't need to be active for anything. Because <clears throat> for some reason that will just come out. No, I don't think it does. But we're going to give it a shot, guys, up on, on the layout, and then we're going to see if it works. All right, then, I'll, I'll see you up on the layout then, guys. Right then, guys, so as you can see, you open the layout now. I know that I haven't got the tender body and cup and hook back on yet, but that's because I actually wanted to test it first, it, just in case that there is anything wrong with it. Um, so, hopefully, fingers crossed, this will all go to plan. So, I mean, for some reason, it's working on DC. But, so, as you can see, let's select the number. Oh, wow. So wait, I can still run this on DC, but at the same time, I can run it on DCC as well. That's quite incredible, to be honest with you. I was not expecting that. Um, let me just this one. I don't know if you saw that, guys, the way it just like raced past, but watch this. Obviously, it's not recommended. To, I'm just going to point this out now. It's not recommended to run this on DC. But the fact that I've actually got the option to actually run... Look, watch. That's DCC mode, isn't it? Right, that's DC. Watch. That's DC mode as well. And that's just like, what the hell? But like I said, I don't know if it can do any damage to the decoder, which I'm not going to do that for too long, just in case it does. But then as you can see, guys, watch. Flip it over to DCC, enter. And then watch this. Oh, I'm actually really happy with that. So what I'm going to do then now, guys, is I'm going to start the video here, get the tender back on somehow, 
And then we'll just see it running around for a little bit. Um, and then we'll just have a couple of laps with it. So I'll, I'll talk to you in a bit then, guys. Right then, guys. So as you can see, I have got the hush hush back on. Um, tender's been sort of put back on, but it hasn't been put on correctly. But I will fix that on a later date. So, uh, because also I was just needed to get this into the locomotive just to get it up and running. And as you can see, let's see if I can get it do do a slow crawl. Look at that. And as you can see, the tender's back on and the uh, the coupling hook's back on as well. So I've been able to put everything back on the way I should be able to. But so, I mean, the, the code is decent. So if any more, more of my locomotives will take that, like Tornado, Sc Scotsman, etc., then they will get this decoder if it's quite decent. I mean, look. That's how we're going to fit. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay then, it's like it was growling at me, it was like... I mean, that's just stuck on the blue tack anyway, so... Just go like that, there we go. Yeah, everything's good. But as you can see, look guys, it's just... running incredible. Well, it was. I didn't like the way that sounded then, whatever that way. Okay, then why have you just slowed down to a call? But yeah, like I said, guys, I will be putting a link in the description below for if you want to pick yourselves one up, which I can highly recommend if you want to go fully DCC like I am, then pick one up because, honest to God, the deep... I mean, the, obviously, this is the first time I've ever um, fitted a locomotive with DCC, and hell, it's one of my favourites to my collection, and that's my Hush Hush. Um... I mean, I could just do this all day, but you know, it's not really fair. But I don't, I don't really know what that was. But, but the way it just banged it across there, is, is everything still okay on it? Yeah. But yeah, guys, like I said, it's quite surprising what a little chip can do. Right, I want to see if it does that noise again. Yeah, it does, but it doesn't do well. That I do know. But as you can see, look, it's just made it around a full lap, so that's quite decent. So I'm quite happy with that. Um, obviously, I will somehow fix the tender. Because uh, if you look carefully, it is actually raising up just ever so slightly. But that's because it's not being put back on properly. And plus, I did have it planned to put some electric tape over the uh, the wires and etc. So, I mean, like I said, it's running quite well, actually. Better than what I thought it would have. But yeah, guys. Um, so what I'm going to do now then is I'm going to flip the camera back round. I'm going to thank you for watching and tell you properly what's going to be coming out Friday. So I'm going to flip the camera back round. I'm going to thank you for watching everything. All right, then. I'll talk to you later, then, guys. Right then, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed that video today. It was just like me showing you how to uh, fit a decoder into your hush -hush. I know people have done it before. And I did kind of say last week or whatever it were that I was going to do this for you, you lot. Um, it was just, it was actually a lot easier than what I thought it were. Obviously, if anyone's going to suggest me DCC fitting these guys behind me, um, I am on that. But obviously, because with those guys, you have to solder them. Um, I'm not going to be doing the Batman lot just yet. I will be doing it one day, but not yet. Uh, because obviously I'm new to fitting my locomotives with DCC and plus with the back of my lot it's not just as simple as pushing some pins into a look to a um board. With those you have to solder the wires, desolder the wires, solder the wires and whatever else. And um yeah. But I do know what decoder it is, what the, these guys need behind me, but I will be doing that one day in the near future. Um I just wanted to get my hush hush out of the way because obviously it's my favourite locomotive and plus because I'm going on DCC now. Um, I wanted to get that one fit with DCC. Thanks to my mate Craig again for pointing out what uh, decoder to get me. Well, to, for me to get, sorry. Um, and yeah, hopefully by this time next year, all my locomotives will be fitted with DCC, hopefully. Um, obviously, I am pretty glad that I've got the option to go from DC to DCC, with this, even down to, to, it, to this new decoder. 
Um, I have heard that it's not recommended though, that you don't go from DC and DCC with the decoders in the locomotives. But the fact that you can actually do that is quite interesting to be honest with you. Sorry guys, it's just that I've been talking, that's why I'm getting, taking a drink. Uh, but yeah, I've really enjoyed today's video. I know it's night time because I'm technically recording this on a Tuesday night. Um, and I do apologise, you know, if you don't like me doing it. I mean, to be honest with you, I prefer night time because you don't get anybody knocking at your door. You don't get sunlight bright or anything like that. You've just got this light above me and plus these lights. But yeah. All I can see is there's a future with, with my layout then. I mean, to say that I'm going fully DCC now, so that's technically my Pendaluna, my Mallard, and that other locomotive, my Hush Hush. Four locomotives I've got on DCC now, guys. That's quite impressive to be honest with you. Um, like I've said, I think I've said this before, I don't really know how to change the, re -change the numbers yet on my new controller. Um. My girlfriend's sort of helped me out with the last one, like how to get my DCC control set up and running, but I've said that before. Um, but yeah, my hush rush is under DCC now, so there's no going back now. Um, I mean, I, that's one other thing I've noticed with some people out there. One minute they'll want to go for the DCC, then, then when they're halfway through it, they'll go, oh, I don't want to do that anymore. It's just, I know DCC is quite expensive, but if you do it like how I'm doing it, it will work out cheaper for you because I think between me, me and my girlfriend, uh, we paid well all together for my hush rush, it was 240 quid, which was 120 quid each from us. Um, and then plus I've had to pay another 20 quid for the decoder. So if you round that up, that's around 260 quid, roughly. So yeah. Sorry about that. Um, but I'm going to say this now, right? If anyone does watch my videos who what knows how to get sound into this locomotive without, you know, spending like over 100 quid on, on it, then uh, please let me know down in the comments below or comment on my video or message me. Uh, because honest to God, right, I would love to have sound in this locomotive because it's just a beautiful runner. Um, I know you can't see it, but it is actually strong now, believe it or not. Uh, what I've got coming out next is what I was actually originally going to record on the Sunday. Um, and it's going to be my Flying Scotsman uh, coach. Um, but other than that, thank you for watching this video today. Please subscribe to my channel. Um, please comment down below what you thought of this decode. And if you want me to do more tutorials like this in the future, then I will do. Which I might plan on doing anyway. Finally. And yeah, like I said, here's to the future of my, my layout and my hobby, what I'm into. So, so yeah, um, like I said, thank you for watching this video today. Please please subscribe to my channel because we're nearly at 200, I mean 350 and I really want to get to that milestone. Um, and I guess I'll see, see you later with, and well, see you Friday with that coach review. Oh then, see you later everyone, take care and have a lovely day and I'll see you in a bit. Oh then, bye.